What's up, Average Dad fans? Welcome back to another video. And this video is officially a public apology to LG. LG, I am sorry. And not just me. My whole community and Average Dad viewership is sorry. Because after using this phone for just six hours, I have no idea how you went out of the smartphone business. Let's go. So for those that don't know, this is the LG wing. And for those that don't know, its unique selling point is this. The only phone of its kind to introduce the swivel form factor. And for whatever reason, back in 2020, when this phone was released, I didn't buy it. And I am starting to regret that very, very much. Now, in isolation, there is absolutely nothing about this phone, other than the form factor, that is unique or groundbreaking. It's a Snapdragon 765G chip, which even at the time, four years ago, wasn't the most flagship one you could get. That was the 865. It's a 6.8-inch P-OLED display. While good, only has a pixel density of around 398 PPI. Compare that to the 500 plus of modern day flagships. It does have a triple camera array. However, no telephoto. Nope, you heard me right. Three cameras, one being a wide and two being an ultra wide. It has a pop-up selfie lens that does shoot at 1080p. Again, not even 4K. And then the battery, just over 4,000 milliamp hours. Again, not groundbreaking even for the time. But given all that, the LG Wing is the most innovative and most sensical phone I have held since starting my channel. There you go. There's a statement to clip and throw back at me in 10 years time. Please keep in mind, I review every Chinese foldable phone that there is. I've currently got the Vivo X Fold 3, which is one of the world's thinnest. It is the world's lightest foldable phones. I also have the Huawei Mate X5, which is the world's most expensive foldable phone. And these devices continually blow me away. But never, even the V2, the world's thinnest foldable phone, the first hand experience of using the LG Wing has been nothing but mind blowing. And I promise you a more unique and satisfying experience than any first impressions foldable device I've ever had. Now for context, the LG Wing was purchased and has been purchased by me to film as part of the Phones That Failed series. A series that I hope to continue long and long into the future. Episode 1 dropped a couple of weeks ago and it was on the Red Hydrogen 1. A smart idea that wasn't implemented well, actually quite terribly. And it ultimately failed. The LG Wing also failed. Sales globally have been horrific. And since the LG Wing, LG have decided, nah, screw this, we're out of the smartphone game. And again, that's where the apology comes into, because I believe it's our fault. Our fault as foldable phone fans, our fault as innovative tech fans. We don't watch this channel, I don't run this channel, because we just want to talk about iPhone leaks, iPad leaks, Fucking whatever other Apple device, like the thousands of other channels that do that. And I'm not, I'm not shitting on them. That's up to them if that's what they want to do. But I want to talk about new and exciting tech and try things from across the globe. Well, as I say, the LG passed me by and since then LG have gone out of business. So I want to give you my first impressions of this device. First of all, the build quality and the design is stunning. This isn't just my first impressions of the LG Wing. This is my first impressions of an LG phone. And all of the hundreds of devices I have owned since I was a teenager, I have never owned an LG device. 
and I, yeah, again, sorry, LG. The LG Wing looks and feels super premium. It is far heavier than most phones and foldable phones. This weighs in at 260 grams. For context, that's heavier than the Mate X5 and it's 41 grams heavier than the Vivo X Fold 3. A reminder for those that don't know, this phone folds and it's still 40 grams lighter than LG Wing. But I like a heavy premium feeling phone. When I first saw this reviewed years ago, I think what initially put me off was that's going to break in no time and it looks plasticky. Absolutely wrong. It's Gorilla Glass Victus, not Victus, sorry. It's Gorilla Glass 5 front and back. One thing I will say is this is an absolute fingerprint magnet and you can't get a case for it really because, well, no case is going to accommodate this too well. But I can get past that. I've got a microfiber. I'm happy to wipe it down every other minute. Other things about this device that have blown me away so far is that camera setup I talked about. Now, the triple camera setup not having a telephoto has been an absolute game changer for LG or for LG back in the back in the day. I really wish this phone, if I had unboxed this phone today as a 2024 flagship, I would still be blown away. Anyway, the triple camera setup is deliberate. It's two ultra wide cameras because one of the main features of this device is a gimbal mode. Yes, as you can see here, you get a little remote control on the bottom screen and you can use it as a full on gimbal basically. Here's a video shot using gimbal mode, super smooth because it's using those two ultra wide cameras. Yeah, and I'm a massive Zoom fan. Everybody that knows me knows that I love a 10 times optical zoom, a million times optical zoom lens. But so far, I'm having too much fun using gimbal mode. And yes, the 765G chip doesn't process photos as quick as modern day smartphones. There is a half a second delay between when you take a photo and when it actually appears in the gallery. But I can forgive that. And you might be thinking, but there's no selfie camera on this. Well, I told you it was 1080p. And here it is, another first for average dad. I have never owned a phone with a pop-up camera. Fact. And the implementation of this is seamless. Keep in mind, this is a four year old device that is relying on its swivel motion hinge. It's also relying on an electronic pop-up and pop-down. I don't know of many people that had issues but that's got to be because of the superior build quality. And another thing to discuss is the software. This phone was released with Android 10. However, it did. LG promised that they would provide three years of OS updates. And sure enough, when I turned on this device and set up and installed the latest update, Android 13 on deck. Now this is very much just a first impressions. I am going to make a whole dedicated video to the software and how I believe that this form factor is perfect. Especially for what 99% of us do and that's just consume content and want to reply to some messages or anything like that or surf the web while the content's playing. The fact that you can do that while it's up the top and then surf the web or reply to messages down the bottom, it's, it's unheard of, to be honest. And I was watching Flossie's review from a few years ago and he was spot on when he said this. When you're viewing content, you hold your phone typically like this. You're like that. Or if you're eating with one hand, you're holding your phone like that all the time. Now, invariably it gets a bit uncomfortable holding it with just two fingers. So you sometimes have to switch and then you switch it to your other hand. With the LG Wing, you don't have that issue. You can hold it in your palm. You can turn off this bottom screen. There's no accidental touches and you can just hold it like that and watch some content for hours with no issue. Not that I advocate you watch your phone for hours on end, but you can if you want to. 
Now, as I mentioned, I'm going to talk about other software, the compatibility and the things you can do with the top. And actually, I was going to say the top, but this could be the bottom. Maybe you want to use this as your gaming so you can have it like this. And then up top, you just get your alerts coming through. Again, possibilities are endless. Now, I want to close this out by saying this will be part of a phones that failed video. However, it's slightly different. Much like the Red Hydrogen 1, that was actually a good phone with a lot of parts. The build quality, the haptics, the speakers. The LG Wing is absolutely a phone that should never have failed. But LG failed. Henceforth, the Wing had to fail too. So I will be out with that episode soon. I just want to finish off by telling you price. The LG Wing was £1,000 when it was released four years ago. You, like I, can pick up an LG Wing if you look hard enough, brand new in box like mine was, for around £300, including postage. Folks, I promise you, if you're looking for a new phone, something a bit different, if you're looking for a second phone, maybe your main one's an iPhone and you want to venture into the Android world or the foldable world but want a bit of a different take on it, you will not regret buying the LG Wing in 2024. I know I'm gassing it up and I know I'm almost busting it over it, but I've just been so impressed. So... While this was going to be a one-off phone that failed episode, this LG Wing might turn into a three or four part series. And just between you and I, it's going to be my daily driver for the next week, maybe even two, maybe even longer. So if for some reason you want to see more content on the LG Wing, or more likely you want to see content on some very nice new foldable phones coming soon, please smash subscribe. I am trying to hit 40,000 subscribers by December 1st. If I make that target, one of you in the comments on this video, this video here, if you comment whatever phone you like, I will pick someone at complete random and you will be given that phone brand new in box if I reach 40,000 subscribers by December 1st. So it's all on you. And I guess me for creating decent enough content for you to watch. If you've enjoyed this video, smash like. If you want to buy me a coffee or a beer, you can do it. Link in description. No obligation. Only if my videos have brought you some light entertainment or joy on this whatever night it is. Is it a Tuesday? I've lost track. Until next time.